two of the the crazier stunts that I've done, and I mentioned because most people probably have seen them. The first stunt that was pretty crazy was on the Avengers. That the first time they all came together and we saw them each, you know, they had their individual movies prior then they came together as a team, but something was saying, move the car. And I did. And then ultimately we got a, a world stunt award for that. Sam Hargrave, welcome to the David Nurse Show. Thank you for being on here. As we are talking earlier off air, you have an incredible, incredible beard. One of the most beautiful beards that I have ever seen. Well, thank you very much. First, for having me on the show. Second, for the beard love. It's much appreciated. <laughs> Sam is a man of many talents. We know a uh, stunt coordinator, actor, producer, director. Is there anything that you don't do in the movie we're, we're talking about makeup you probably i mean you look really good well thank you it, you know i've done most jobs behind the camera and in front of the camera i mean i truthfully i haven't been paid for craft service yet but i have done a few uh short films and an a independent feature back in the day where i did serve pizza to the crew so technically i've got them all covered wow amazing and being yeah. from new york city you know pizza the best I tell you, you know, I'm, I'm living in New York City because my wife is from here. I'm actually from North Carolina, born and raised Hillsboro, small town north of Raleigh, Durham. So I was a southern boy. So me being in, uh, in New York is, uh, you know, a very interesting from a, you know, from a <laughs> being a southern boy being like, oh, now now I'm living in New York. I think my, my grandparents might roll over in their grave, but we just won't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's what we do. I'm from Iowa. I live in Los Angeles. We have good Love moral it. values. We're great people just living in cool cities. We don't we're, we're not New Yorkers. We're not L.A. We're not the, you know, the high maintenance bougie. We have good values. Yeah, I mean, that's important. You know, v values is like that's a super important thing to have. And, you know, I try sometimes it's it's challenging, you know, to, to live up to those uh expectations and standards you put on yourself, but you got to, you got to try. So we're going to dive in here, Sam. What is the craziest stunt that you have ever done that you felt, oh my goodness, this might be the end of me? You know, I've been pretty fortunate uh, in the stunt world to, to have worked with some, some great stunt coordinators whose number one goal was always safety. And that's been my goal as, as a stunt coordinator and stunt performer is to always focus on safety. So there really were very few times where I, as a performer, stepping up to do the gag, so to speak, was concerned. I mean, sure, there's the natural fear that humans have doing something that you're probably not meant to do, you know, falling 180 feet off of a building, um, you know, attached to a wire. Sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, I, but probably two of the, the crazier stunts that I've done, and I mentioned because most people probably have seen them, uh, and they're similar in a way. They involve uh, wires and gravity and glass and heights. The first stunt that was pretty crazy was on the Avengers that the first time they all came together and we saw them each, you know, they had their individual movies prior then they came together as a team. Mm -hmm. And when Captain America was saving a group of people in a bank in downtown and there was an explosion that one of the alien you know, beings set off, it catapulted Captain America backwards through a window and he lands on a car in the street. That was me. And we, I was, it was crazy because you're, you're in there and you've rehearsed it a bunch of times and um, there's just like a, a an innate air awareness because you've done this so many times that you kind of feel what's right and what's wrong. And when I was up there, I remember looking back before they put the glass in, right? Because you do all this stuff without the glass and then they're like, okay, we're, we're going to shoot now. We're putting the glass in. There's no takesies, backsies. <laughs> While I was up there and I looked behind me, I just had this feeling because you rehearse the pads, right? And then they pull the car in. And I had this feeling, I was like, ah, I don't know why, I couldn't tell you. We rehearsed it and they put the car exactly where the pads were. So everything was measured out exactly how it, we had rehearsed. And yet I had this gut feeling that the car was out of place. I wanted to move it in two feet 
And I don't know why. And the, the, you know, I'm telling them down there, I was like, guys, just move the car in two feet. They're like, are you sure? We measured it exactly. It's whatever the exact, you know, 40 feet from the, from the building. It's three feet from the sidewalk. We did, we did this. And it's like, I know I'll take it. It's on me, but move the car in a couple feet, a couple, like I said, two feet, 24 inches, move the car towards the curb, towards the building, two feet. Wow. And they were like, Hey, you know, all right, that's up. It's your ride. And, and they did again, couldn't tell you why just an intuition. But then it was three, two, one, go hit the button. I get catapulted out the window because I'm, I'm wearing a, a thing they call a jerk fest, which is a, a harness. And then uh-huh. they have a wire attached to me, which is hooked to a, a pneumatic uh, air ram. They call it like a, a, a ratchet. So it's, it's compressed air that fires a cylinder, which then has a very strong force that'll pull you sure. and make you fly. <laughs> and so I, it's hooked to my back. I fly through the window, special effects hits the button on time. I smash through the glass and then land on the car perfectly. And, you know, afterwards when I get up, I kind of look down, raise my eyebrows. Like Phew. if I hadn't move that car forward two feet, I would have landed short and my thighs would have been what hit the car and it oh. would have bounced me off of the car head first into the concrete probably. So, you know, hindsight is, is everything or 2020 they say. And again, I couldn't tell you why I had that thing, but it must've just been that, st- that in the flow state been like, Oh man, just feeling everything. And like it, it all started to click time slowed down. And I was just moving, orchestrating things outside that normally I would let go and trust what was, what we'd rehearsed. But something was saying, move the car. And I did. And then ultimately, we got a, a World Stunt Award for that. So as a mindset coach to top NBA performers, CEOs, Hollywood actors, and just high performers of all level, the, the main thing that these top performers have to be is locked in mentally and locked in physically. Now, I've dealt with a lot of optimization products that have done one or the other, but I've never had something that does both of these. Mental acuity and physical domination, and that is GoExec. GoExec is built differently. So are you, so am I. Scientifically backed, GoExec has carefully formulated a product that supports ATP production, mitochondrial biogenesis, improves blood flow, and protects your cells from oxidative stress leading to cellular aging. The results in increased mental clarity, sustained energy, and delayed cellular aging. Go exec has become my go-to, and here's why. Let me tell you about this thing called BioPQQ. Nobody is using this. This is a booster of energy, endurance, longevity. BioPQQ has scientifically been shown to slow the aging process. Isn't that what we're all trying to do is stay young, slower the aging process, increase energy levels. Yeah, I'll take that and improve cognition function. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to have higher cognitive firing brain synapses? It won the Ingrinda Editor's Choice Awards for ingredient with the best science. The ingredient with the best science. Yeah, it works. Mind and body. Go exec. Go Get it. I use it when I step on stage to speak, when I get behind the mic and I podcast. Go exec is my go to. As you should. What do you say yeah. after that? What do you say after that to the crew? Like, guys, I told you so. Well, it's, you know, it, it's less of less I told you so and more just like, holy crap, I'm glad that we did that. And everybody else being like, good call, you know, so, like, way to listen to your gut. Because I find it very counterproductive to go backwards and say, I told you so. Usually it's moving forward. You say on to myself, well done. Way to listen to that still small voice, that intuition that's Absolutely. speaking to you. Because sometimes all of the noise around you, it gets drowned out. Your instincts can get drowned out. But you got to be sure and listen, especially when you're doing something super dangerous when it comes to, to stunts. Man, man, God's protection and hand on you is the intuition and you trust in it. That's That's enormous. And and you touched on a word flow state. And I want to talk a little bit Mm -hmm. about flow state, especially for people who are doing uh, just very dangerous stunts. You have to be completely locked in in the zone. You can't have distractions floating around, but also in a creative sense in what you're able to do from that standpoint. Is there anything that you do in particular that helps you get into this flow state? Or is it something that just, man, you've done it so many times that, that it just happens? 
Well, I think a lot of it is experience. A lot of it is in the doing, right? Like the more you do it, the the easier in quotes it is to get into that state. Absolutely. I think, I mean, I think the, if I were to, um, you know, li- list a practice that was helpful for me in arriving in flow states, it would be meditation. And I started doing mm-hmm. that when I was in, in martial arts and uh, by back 13 when I was 13 or 14 years old. And it was just, you know, sitting still cross-legged on the mat at that time, not really understanding it, but it was just trying to center your energy and focus because you want to run around and burn off all this excess energy at at that age, but you got to focus, center it, and then use it through the class. Now that was where it started. And then, you know, I grew up Christian as well. And so that prayer was, it was a thing. And, and even before each stunt, I mean, from the time I started to like my last stunt, if I was going to do a big thing, you could call it a prayer. You could call it an affirmation. You could call it a declaration, whatever it is. But I would, I would always say before the stunt, I would just say protection and perfection. Mm. Say protection and perfection, which for me was just kind of um, invoking the protection of God, universe, whatever's out there looking over you, your intuition, your flow state. So protection as I go through this trial and then perfection, meaning to the best of my ability, to the best that we can with all the rehearsals we've done and just in the moment, just be present and to the best of my ability, make this stunt perfect. And so it would be protection and perfection. I would just sit there visualizing the stunt happening as you know, to the best of my ability, the perfect stunt. And I would just say these things, sit there rocking or pace back and forth just to really get it in. And so, you know, the practice of meditation, yep. then this declarations and visualization though, when you practice those things, then when you enter into that moment, the flow state kind of becomes much more readily available to you. I know in this particular instance, when I was flying backwards, like time did slow down. It's crazy that you say that because it does. When when you hear that countdown at three, two, one, go, when that happens, it's like an explosion, but everything slows like you see in the movies. And I remember going through the glass and we're feeling, you know, the, the cut says it hit my scalp and just like the nerves mm. freaking out. But then, you know, looking down and saying like, all right, things are going great. Turn my body this way. Make sure you're kicking your feet because you want to make it look good for camera. I was like, oh, thank God that car is there. And then you you hit the ground and you hit the car. And But all of that's going through your mind in what happened in less than two seconds in real time. You've got a whole internal dialogue going on. You're seeing it happen. You're kind of outside your body. It's wild when you can get into that flow state. Yeah. And that's what flow state is. Essentially, you are slowing down time. It's a a novelty effect that happens. But man, I love that answer, too. I mean, the experience that you put in the prayer, we could call it as it is. That's God looking over you. He's watching out for you. And I love that. Love that faith that you have and visualization and seeing it happen before it it actually happens. So how about let's shift from the stunt now to the creative aspect. So the mm-hmm. creative aspect when you are, I mean, I mean, I would say you do basically everything there is to do with movies, film. And I know you're getting in, into more television coming up here. How do you, is there anything that you do to systematize your creativeness or are you just always looking and always aware? I know when I write books, I'm always just, you know, it's more of the, not as much as the hyper focus as it is the scatter focus where an idea will come to me. And I'm just open and aware to something. How Do you have a process for that? I looked up some stats on this. Check this out. This is incredible. 31% of adults worldwide have more confidence based on clear skin. 31, that's almost one third of people like, hey, you got clear skin, you're more confident. Get this, better looking people, meaning of just the term, the clear skin as we're putting that with, earn 12% more financially over their lifetime. 12% more, that, that literally could be millions of dollars. You are investing a lot into the lab, into the science, into yeah. the research. It is so far a no brainer why anybody would try would use anything else other than one skin like is there any is there anything like you can even think of that makes sense like i'm trying to and i can't i want to say out of the kindness of your guys heart you are providing for our listeners a special 
pricing code, which will be in the show notes. So look in the show notes to try out One Skin for yourself. I strongly recommend to subscribe to our newsletter. We want to empower everyone because we know that the choices that we are making today will definitely impact how you're, oh. you know, are gonna age tomorrow. A little bit of both in the scatter focus and hyper focus, right? Mm -hmm. I, ca I carry a shotgun and, and a rifle with a scope on it so, because I, I like think, that. you know, when you, sh if I'm writing or if I'm doing my work, you know, if you make it a daily practice, the muse knows where to find you. Yeah. You know, it's like, so show up in the same chair, just do the same. So if it was go back to stunts, it, you just showed up training the training over and over and over again means that the creative, you know, spirit knows where to find you. Same with, the answer that I give is the same when it comes to choreography or even, you know, acting or performing is when you rehearsed it so many times, it's part of you. Then spontaneity has room to blossom. Ooh. So for writing or for in the, you know, the creative sense of directing, you know, all of the work that I do ahead of time, I, I try to do that daily and consistently find a time, find a space to, to at least put in your couple hours of focused reading, focused like study of the scene or, fo you know, focused script work. And then that's, so that's where the s select focus comes in. Yep. That's where the muse knows where to find yep. me. And then when I go out amongst the world, I'm always looking, like carry my shotgun with me, <laughs> always looking to see, oh, that would be a cool thing if we, you know, there was someone falling off of this building or, oh, the light, when it hits the side mm -hmm. of that car, it bounces off. Ooh, maybe I could use that in a scene where I want to, you know, so you're always, open to inspiration but definitely make time not take make time mm. to show up mm. you know for your creative endeavor so that the muse knows where to find you sam that's one of the best analogies that i've heard for using focus and flow and merging them into what i call flocus is the shotgun in the rifle with the scope analogy that's beautiful well really thanks cool, man. really really good so now as a director and you've worn many hats like we're talking about as a director, I don't think many people talk about the, the leadership skills and talents that go into directing. People will talk about sports coaches, CEOs, but directors, you're ultimately, and correct me if I'm wrong here, a little naive on the directing part, but you are managing different personalities to place them in the exact vision that you have for the shot. Is that correct? It's 100% correct. Directing is... 95% managing people yeah. and personalities. The other five is the creative aspect of bringing some knowledge about wow. camera, lenses, lighting, all that stuff. That's the technical side. Those skills, actually, you can get from other people, meaning when you hire the right people, you're hi you have someone who's there to watch your lighting. He's the director of photography. You have somebody there who's doing the scheduling. He's your, you know, your first assistant director. You have someone doing the camera and the lenses. So, but for the leading, the leadership part, that is a skill that you have to bring to the table. You can learn it, of course, but yet that's you. And every single crew member, every single single cast member is uniquely different, especially in Hollywood. Every every person has a unique, you know, personality and way they approach their work. The challenge is finding out how to connect with those people on a level that's meaningful wow. for them and to pull out of them or push, right? It could be push, pull. It really right. depends on the person, totally. but you have to extract what it is that you need to get the movie, the scene, you know, the emotion that you want moment by moment. What a use of the word extract with you heard it. It was in there. Number one and number two at one point on Netflix extraction one and two. See, that's, that's cool. I mean, you've probably dealt with like, I mean, people like, you know, in the NBA, you have big personalities, you have big egos, you have to deal yeah. with that. And it, yeah. do you, I mean, do you coach, I guess I'm using the word coach or direct people differently? Because there's two ways the schools have thought of it as coaches and leaders. It's your way or the highway, which always burns people out and never eventually, like never works long term, or it's you coach people to their strengths and to their optimal level. 100%. It's kind of, uh, I think, uh, Stephen M. Covey, I think, the son of Stephen R. Covey, or yeah. maybe I have him backwards. But one of the Coveys wrote a book called Trust and Inspire Leadership yeah. and differentiated the trust and inspire versus command and control. So mm -hmm. I have found through my time in the film industry that 
most people respond much more positively to a trust and inspire type leader. They, yeah. you know, they're going to, it's cool. just human nature to butt up against someone who's tr commanding you and saying, do this because and pushing you really hard. Some people respond, you know, they, they, you have to be able to have that yeah. in your bag, but it, that will get old very quickly and you'll find a lot more rebellion than cooperation. So as a trust and inspire leadership is something that I you know, aspire to because I found it to work so much better. Each person, like I said, takes a different tool in order to unlock their potential. Mm. So you have to, you have to just be there with them and you okay. find what is it that's going to make this person shine? Yeah. Cause that's my job, right? You, you can't wow. just force a square peg in a round hole. You have to say, all right, how can we utilize all these things that we know to pull the very best out of you? Cause when it goes up on screen, that's all of that's what it's all about is what, mm -hmm. whatever it is you're giving me and what we're putting on screen that, you know, that's, that's my job is to pull out the best from people. Man, this is fascinating. Just peeling yeah. back the layers of the onion that goes behind the scenes of what I think is the most powerful medium of influence. There is, is TV is movies. It is. Yeah. It's, it's the that. opportunity there to inspire is incredible. So it's, it's a very powerful medium. Yeah, and you and you have been at the top. I mean, directing Extraction One and Two, and seeing the success that it has. Is there any? I mean, you know, when you get to the top, you're like, okay, I made it. There's never really an "I made it" moment, but is there a sense of feeling of I have to keep doing more? Are you content? What do you do to keep pushing the needle forward? It's almost the uh, the sustaining greatness type instead of the you get to the top and then you fall off because you thought I made it. Yeah. I think I made it are three of the most dangerous words that we can ever <laughs> utter. Because, they, are. they are. And I, I'm flattered that you say you know, at the top, I don't look at it that way. I don't know if there's ever a top to the mountain. I think yeah. there is the, the journey towards some unknown level of aspiration that I have. And I don't know if I ever get there, then I have to find a new mountain to climb because I think if you rest at the top, you're, you're going to fall off because you can either be you're either growing or you're, you're, or you're dying. Yep. And so an, an analogy that I um, think heard that I thought was really great is people talk about a, a work life balance and it's like that that's as if you can reach that place and things will be balanced. It's, it's like work life balancing. Yeah. Like you're always balancing. Yeah. So for this, I think it's, it's not, we made it to the top. We're always trying and striving to get to, you know, the top, whatever that is for us. But I think ultimately a, a way to look at it, if you took the top and you, you remove those words and insert it to say my best, mm, you know, then you could, cause then we're always striving for your best. And that marker can change because it can evolve and it can grow. Cause as you change and evolve, your best changes and evolves. Like my, my best work, on extraction like that movie was the best i had at that time and then extraction 2 comes along i've learned some more things i've done i've had more experience so then that hopefully is just a little bit better you get a little bit better version of me because i've grown and i've learned and i but i still look at it now that because we finished that movie and it's been it's been out and it was you know six eight months ago and filming finished almost a year ago or more. Yeah. So now, by now, I feel like I've grown even more. I have something new to offer. When I look back at it, I am satisfied. Meaning, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we did. But I'm, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not done. I'm not like, oh well, that's the best it can ever get. <laughs> I hope not, because yeah. then I should stop doing what I'm doing and pick something else. Because you know, the yeah always striving for our best. That's the ultimate goal. Great, man. You could be a motivational speaker. I want that TED talk from you about coordinating stunts and with what you just talked about, the journey of you're climbing a mountain and you're falling off the mountain and some kind of stunt motivation in your TED talk. I see it. Hey, I tell you what, we put it out there. You put it out there and now I'll take it and run with it. Let's put it out in the universe that there'll be a Sam Hargrave TED talk in, Sam, you know, in the next couple of years. Let's Sam, I'm doing there. it. I'm going to post that and tag Ted. They've responded to my TED talk that I've done. So I have communication with them. Don't think I'm not doing that. Don't think I'm not serious. I would get up there. I, I would love it because you know, part of part of what I'm trying to focus on now is is giving back. You know, I not that I wasn't before, but I think I, sometimes you get a little preoccupied with the journey and you're like, you know, that what, what can I do? Make myself better and and push yourself so hard sometimes that you you get tunnel vision and forget that 
the better version of you is bringing others along with you mm. and helping people be the best version of themselves because you, you never do it alone. There's a great uh, documentary on Netflix about Arnold and him saying, you can call me anything you want, but never call me a self-made man. Yeah, it's true. And he was the master at organizing communities that were like-minded in their goal and it made him better. And obviously it worked for him. I mean, look at what he did with his life. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always trying to give back. And hey, a tech talk is a great way to do that. Dude, I love it. I love it. And it's just the the natural growth of life. When we're young, we want to feel validated. We want to accomplish. We want to feel our individual success. But when you're older, you realize that's never going to fill you. It's all about giving back. It's all about serving others through the gifts that you've been given. You can tell anybody that, but until they experience it themselves, they never fully learn it. It's kind of like fatherhood. You know, I've heard, I heard it yeah. so many times like, oh, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. And I was like, yep, yeah, sure. I guess we'll see when it happens. And then it happened. I'm a new dad. I got a seven and a half month oh, old upstairs. Congrats, man. And it, it is the most true thing I've ever experienced is life changing man. when you have a child. It's, okay. you can't, and let, you can't experience it. And I mean, you, you can't no. uh, know what it feels like until you experience it. It's a totally, I mean, it's individual. Everybody has their own experience. However, I believe there's not a lot of other um, things you can go through in life that will be as changing and, and just it just shifts your whole perspective. Father, Man, please life. take some daily notes for Taylor and I as we are. We're going to be right behind you in that journey. So take some notes. We'll, well lead send them our uh, way. For sure. I've got a bunch and I've read a lot of books on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's just like everything else. You can read as many books as you want, but until it actually happens, you're like, uh, it's kind of like business school. I went to business school. Well, I don't yeah, yeah. business school. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's almost, it's kind of similar in that what it allows you to do. I, I felt similar with um, preparing for a talk or preparing for a stunt is the more preparation that you do that allows you in that moment. Sure. You can throw it out the window, but some of it is still inside yeah, of you. You're totally. not just, you're not just, it's not a complete dump. And now everything you read and, and listened to is completely gone. You're not having to rigidly adhere to any of the things that you've read or heard. However, all of it put together, you're coming up with your own path mm -hmm. and that it, with stones from different, you know, quarries that you've mined along the way. And it really is important, I think, to have as much knowledge as you can, because then it leads to a, a wonderful experience. You don't have to stress about, oh, my God, what do I do in this situation? You're like, oh, this is similar to this thing that I heard about. I'm going to, well, I don't have this on hand. I'm going to do it this way. And now you, you have this kind of um, experience before the experience. It's never the same. And I'm not saying that, you know, you can be a great parent just by reading books. However, <laughs> having read them, a lot of books, it does help and it give you gives you a sense of um, preparedness yeah. as you undertake the journey. So I, I recommend it, man. I, I love it. It's just like you have done with your career. And what I tell everybody is everything is a transferable skill. Everything that you've learned is going to help you for what's coming next. Everything that you read is going to help you with what's coming next. Most people mm -hmm. think it's cut and dry. One thing's different than the other, but everything is a transferable skill. I know that you see that in directing. You're like, oh, I'm glad I did this in acting. I'm glad I did this in, in stunt coordinating. And, and you take these transferable skills and it continues to grow along that journey. Dude, you're so good at this. Like you are a motivational speaker, <laughs> even more so than a director, which is, which is stay directing. Don't take my job. OK, and I don't know. I don't think we want to say <laughs> extraction three ain't going to be very good. <laughs> hey, I don't know. Transferable skills. Part of my job is motivational speaking totally. because I have to get all these things out of people. It really is. So, hey, I don't know. I wouldn't cut yourself short there. But <laughs> all right, Sam, there's so much I would love to continue asking you, but we'll have to get some pizza at Defara's Pizza in Brooklyn someday. But I'm going to throw you on. That's my favorite pizza spot. Being a Brooklyn Let's Nets coach that I went there all the time. Yeah, it is the best. There's no debate. I'll throw you on the rapid fire hot seat as we wind down here. So this can be quick answers, whatever comes to your mind. Sam, what is next for you? What are you, uh, what are you really excited about coming up? Uh, well, I'm, I've got a TV show that um, Apple is doing now. It's up in the air because of the strike, uh, the strikes sure. with the WGA and SAG after. Yeah. However, it's a very exciting show. John Bokenkamp is the writer showrunner and it's a really fun exciting thrilling show that i'd really like to to put up on the screen and if you know if not there's a couple of features in the pipeline that we're 
we're working on in you know in the uh, meantime. Amazing. And that's with Apple, right? Oh, Apple's the TV show, and then there's a couple okay. other features okay. that are they're just internal now. We haven't sold them yet. We're, we're internal. Nice, nice. What is um, you know what what is, what is the uh, the hardest? The, sorry, who is the hardest worker that you have worked with? Hardest worker, Chris Hemsworth. Because I, I have to, and not only have to say it because he's, you know, the friend, but he, he puts in the work both on screen and off screen as, and not just as an actor and, you know, for his body, but he puts in the work yeah. for his family. And I think that's very admirable. Love it. What are you not doing that you want to be doing? Is there something holding you back internally or are you just clicking on all cylinders? Anything you struggle with, Sam? Oh, I struggle every day. My my biggest goal for is to string together, you know, 10 consecutive days without hitting the snooze button. Ooh. I've been reading all of these things about how hitting the snooze button is not following through on your word to yourself. And I and I've just really it's been this crazy battle because I for the longest time, I, you know, I get up early. I was like, "Oh, I'm a 5 a.m. riser." Well, sure, my alarm goes off at 4:30 so I can get up at 5. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just one day and I was like, "Man, why, why is it that it's so difficult for me to get out of bed? Why do I keep snoozing? And I, I think it's, it's like procrastination in a way. I, I mean, I'm still searching for what that real reason is, but that, that's holding me back from, I think, being the most um, authentic version of myself and being, being true to my commitments to myself, yeah. getting yeah. up on the time when I say that I will. Oh, great answer. Okay, so I'm going to hold you accountable in that. I'm going to message you, you. Hey, is it 10 days in a row? 10 days in a row, yeah, getting up without, you, without hitting the snooze. And once you get to 28 days, that's a generally accepted number for creating a habit that will stick. Well, then you know what? Hey, how about this? How about let's, let's forget the 10 days. Let's go for the, what's the habit? 28 days? Oh, 28 days. Yep. Boom. Let's just say 28 days. Let's okay. just go for it. Go for the habit immediately because that's one of my favorite books, Atomic Habits by James Clear. So let's just, let's put the system in place. Come on. And with accountability and let's make it happen. All right. Well, I'm your new accountability coach. So when you I get that. Yeah, a message at 5 a.m. Well, that'd be 2 a.m. my time, so you probably won't get one that early. But Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out a way to, to work on our accountability communication. <laughs> Sam, is there something that, that you want people to know, something burning inside of you that you see in society that really is, you know, you see people struggling. It's, it's uncertainty. It's fear that people have. Is there something that you really want people to know and that you would just, you know, go to the ends of the earth to have somebody be able to learn this and apply this to their life? That is one of the best questions I've ever heard. And, and so many, but the thing that, can, that popped into my head since rapid fire is self-compassion. I think so, so many people, myself included, I think I would lead the pack can be so self-critical yeah. in our pursuit of excellence that we forget we would never speak to a close friend or someone we cared about the way we speak to ourselves. Mm. So I think that could change so many lives if we just take the time to have compassion for ourselves, knowing that we're doing the best we can at this moment. That does not mean we're just not room for improvement. There always is. However, at this moment, you're doing the best you can and just be compassionate to yourself and, you know, just ease up a little bit, man. It's, it's a long, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, totally, man. And that's where the life joy and the contentment comes in. Dude. So good. You crushed this interview. You crushed. <laughs> I didn't even, everybody listen. I did not prep him with any questions. I just said, let's go. Let's bring it. Phenomenal. Sam. Thank you so much you. for coming on this. Just how, how can we all, as we know, just go on Netflix and you'll probably find something Avengers or, you know, extraction, oh, <laughs> same hard grave, in the, hard grave in there, but how can we follow everything you're doing and support you, man? Uh, well, I think the best way is probably Instagram. It's just Sam Hargrave uh, or at Sam Hargrave, whatever that handle is on Instagram. That's uh, I post a lot of stuff about the movies I'm working on and behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, I want to start posting a little here soon, just some more inspirational things, because like you said, I mean, not that I'm going to <laughs> maybe take up a career in motivational speaking. However, I feel like sometimes it, people that are watching, you know, on Instagram, it can For be helpful sure. just to get a little pick me up, you know, a little inspiration in their daily lives. So uh, catch me on Instagram at Sam Hargrave. Yeah. And, and we joke about the motivational speaking, but you're given your platform, you have your vessel to serve others. And that's your vessel. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are watching you. A lot of people are watching what you do. So think about the, the, the effect you can have on people. It doesn't have to be the motivational speaking, but you are 
you're showing people hope. You're showing people a better yeah. life that they can live through what you do. And that's very admirable. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Sam, best beard in America. Thank you for coming <laughs> on the podcast, my man. Thanks for having me. Thank <laughs> you.